She's an international style icon and a darling of the fashion elite, dressing at Tinseltown stars and even rubbing shoulders with fashion royalty. Debuting with this line of her eponymous label in 2008. Designer brand of the year goes to Victoria Beckham. She even beat out Stella McCartney and Tom Ford to win Best Designer Brand at the 2011 British Fashion Awards. Now Victoria Beckham is releasing her latest ready-to-wear line in Hong Kong, but it wasn't her keen eye for style that pushed her into the spotlight. Well, are we? we are the Spice Girls. What power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It was her role as Posh Spice in the 90s British pop phenomenon, The Spice Girls, that would see her shoot to international fame. The group even reaching number one on the music charts in more than 30 countries with their 1996 hit, Wanna Be. Her high-profile marriage to the British superstar footballer David Beckham has also kept Victoria firmly in the public eye, making her one half of the world's most watched couples. This week, Talk Asia's in Hong Kong with Victoria Beckham. You're a wife, you're a mother, fashion designer, celebrity, model. Uh, you do a bit of TV hosting, you're a best-selling author. Crikey, you make me sound quite good. <laughs> you're <laughs> a busy girl. Victoria Beckham, welcome to Talk Asia. Thank you very much. You have been in the public eye for almost 20 years, and throughout that time... Oh God, that's so old! <laughs> okay, No, yeah. you're not. Yeah. You're not. I was a mere child when I started. I know, so. you were 18. Yeah. 18. Your life has undergone this amazing transformation. Yeah. How, how do you think you have changed over that time? Yeah, I mean, I've changed so much, you know. I think that, like most women say, you know, I didn't really become me until I was over 30. And I've learned so much. I mean, I've had two careers, which is incredible. You know, I'm very respectful of my past and what I've done with the Spice Girls. Um, and I've learned an enormous amount from that. And now I'm doing what I've always wanted to do. You know, fashion is my passion. And I've experienced so many things in the last 20 years, if you like. And finally, I feel that I'm doing something um, that I'm not, you know, maybe I'm quite good at in my own way. I mean, I've got a long, long way to go. You know, I've only just started. But I feel that I'm competing in an arena um, where I have something to really offer. Well, you, you say that you, you think you are good. You are exceptionally good. And, and the critics say it, the customers say it. We are going to talk about uh, your fashion. But I, I want to ask you about the, the public persona because you are one of the most photographed women in the world. Sometimes you smile for the cameras. But, the, you know, the public persona is very mm. different to the woman sitting in front of me yeah. right now. Yeah. Why is that? Do you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I gave up worrying about what people thought a long, long time ago, you know. I don't know. I am doing. Everybody says that I'm. I'm very different to what they think, and I suppose that I created, um, you know, this character, if you like, and maybe that's maybe that's my armor. Maybe that's. I don't know. May, maybe that's how I protect myself. I don't know. Well, you've just come from China, and uh, on your way to Beijing, you were on a flight and took yeah. a photo. Uh, playing air hostess yeah. and, and you posted it on Twitter. Yeah. You also took some photos, uh, you know, with the apron on in, in Starbucks serving coffee. Yeah. That's obviously you showing a different side of yourself. Yeah. Do you know what? I think using the, um, yeah, you know, Twitter and Facebook, um, I, think is, I think it's great. It really does enable me to, um, to get directly to my fans and have fun. And when I was on the aeroplane, I mean, don't forget, we have flown about 14 hours to get to that point with a baby you know we were all really really tired and the things that you do to amuse yourself when you're tired um, yeah I just thought it was I thought it was funny <laughs> and the, Make me it laugh. was funny it was funny and I thought the hosty uh, who was uh, sending herself up I thought yeah. it was uh, she was great she, she was, was great. great let me ask you Victoria do you care what people say what people think no, of you. No, no, I mean, I gave up a long, long time worrying and concerning myself over that, you know. I, I care what people say about what I do professionally. I care about what my customer says. You know, that's, that's what I do care about because why do I do what I do? I do what I do because 
I love women. I want to empower women. I want women to feel good. I want them to feel beautiful. And so I care about what, what my customer thinks because I want to give her what she wants. But generally speaking, I don't, I don't focus too much on anything negative. I'm a really positive person. I really am. Um, so no, not really. Is it true that you read all the reviews about your clothes? Yeah, I do. I read up. I, I do. I read all of the reviews. You know, I was nervous when I first went into the fashion industry because I was very aware of people's preconceptions. Um, but I really focused on what I was doing. The product spoke for itself. It's all about quality. I remember Mark Jacobs saying to me when I first started and before he'd even seen what I was doing, he said to me, um, make sure the quality is good. Then people can always say they don't like it, but no one can say it's rubbish. Um, and the quality is something that has become very much signature to me and my brand. I do give my customer the very best. Well, as a designer, you are now fashion royalty. You debuted back in 2008 at the New York uh, Fashion Week with your eponymous label, and since then it has become this amazing success. How does that feel? Do you know, it, it feels great. I mean, when I've had a successful collection, um, the first thing I think is, that's great. It means I can do another collection. That's the first thing that I think. Um, I always want to better myself. I don't consider myself... I don't, sorry, I don't consider other designers competition. You know, for me, my competition is me from the season before. I'm very ambitious. I always want to better myself. I never sit back and say, wow, look at what I've achieved. And to be honest, I kind of wish that I could do that because I should do that. But I always just want to better myself and what's next and how can I improve? How can I make myself better? I'm a perfectionist, but in the nicest sense of the word. I'd like to thank the British fashion industry um, for your support. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank my team. You all know who you are for everything that you do. Thank you. Your focus, your creativity. Thank you. I couldn't do it without you. Well, last year you won Designer of the Year at the uh, British Fashion yeah. Awards, beating the likes of Stella McCartney and, and Tom Ford. Did you think then, I've made it? Do you know, I didn't. I mean, I was, it, it, it meant so much to me. It really did. Because who'd have thought? Um, I was just so overwhelmed. And still am, really. I mean, to, to even be in a category competing with Tom Ford and Christopher Bailey and, and Stella is, is huge. I mean, that's really, really big. And I was proud of myself. I was proud of my team. You know, we're a really small team and everybody works really hard and is passionate about what they do. And I just felt really proud. Um, but the first thing I thought, after I'd got over the initial shock and the, the crying on stage, um, the first thing I thought of is, what am I going to do next? Mm. You know, I'm really tough on myself. I really am. Like I said, I don't care about what other people think so much, um, but for me, I'm, I'm really tough on myself. Mm. Where do you get your inspiration from? You know, it can be from anywhere. I mean, I travel a lot. Um, last season for the Ready to Wear, um, my husband inspired me with the beanie hats, for example. You know, there was a, uh, a baseball theme that ran throughout the collection. That was Romeo running into the kitchen when I was there in a baseball shirt. And I thought, hey, that looks really great. I want to use that collar detail. So I can get inspired from, from, from everywhere, really. But my, my family life definitely inspires what I do a lot. Well, you're certainly not short of admirers. Celebrities like Beyonce, Julia Roberts, Gwyneth Paltrow, Cameron Diaz, Kate Winslet, just to name a few, wear your designs. How do you feel when you see these women in your dresses? I mean, it's, it's really, really exciting for me that, that I'm dressing some of the most beautiful, powerful, influential women in the world. Um, I have to pinch myself when I see anybody wearing a dress, you know, and, and it's not just one type of woman either. It's women of different shapes and sizes and different ages as well. I mean, for me, one of the most exciting points of my career was, was dressing Oprah, for example, a woman that... I mean, I met Oprah and I didn't know whether to shake her hand or curtsy. I mean, literally. <laughs> and the fact that I had the opportunity to dress Oprah, who is definitely a more curvaceous mm. woman, 
Um, so that's what feels really exciting for me is the fact that I'm designing dresses that are for women, whatever age and whatever shape and size, you know. I just want to make women feel, like I said, empowered and beautiful. What did Oprah say about the dress that uh, you got her to wear? She said that it was beautiful. And I guess that's the ultimate compliment, isn't it? It really is. I mean, she just, she just blew me away. She really did. Coming up, Victoria gives us the lowdown on her latest line, plus... I'm never going to sit here and say, poor me, I'm being followed by photographers. Are you kidding me? I'm the luckiest woman in the world. Victoria opens up about living life in the public eye. started your second line, mm -hmm. Victoria, Victoria Beckham. What's the reason behind this? You know, I wanted to design a, a designer collection that was a little bit more affordable. So this isn't a diffusion line, you know, it's, it's still designed. I haven't compromised with design, with detail, with fabrics. Um, I'm still producing in Europe, but I can offer it to my customer and I can, uh, production-wise, I can actually produce a lot more so I can reach more customers and I can, I can do it at a slightly um, cheaper price point, which is great. I think that's really exciting. It's the other side to my wardrobe. Um, you know, it's the girl. It, I, I say this, the, the Victoria line for me is channeling my inner girl. You know, it's very girly, it's very feminine, it's fun, it shows sense of humour, it shows personality, working with conversational prints, which is something, for example, that I don't do in the ready-to-wear, that, you know, can't help but make you smile. I use lots of very energising colours, it's very upbeat. Um, there's personality, and it's fun and girly, but it's also very chic and sophisticated at the same time so it's definitely the other side to my wardrobe I read that you're very hands-on with the process mm. and, and that you try on each design yeah. is that true yeah I design things that I want to wear myself whether it's a handbag a pair of sunglasses or one of the dresses absolutely everything I design because I want to wear it and I presume that this is a uh, Victoria it is. Beckham design it is. beautiful dress Thank you very much. other than the dresses that you wear mm -hmm. who are your favorite designers I mean there are so many designers that I admire that I respect and also that that I learn an enormous amount from and a lot of designers that I'm fortunate now to be able to call friends um, I mean I'd say whose clothes do I wear um, Prada, Miu Miu, Lanvin, Jill Sander um, I mean there's so many incredible designers out there you mentioned your husband a little bit earlier and that you gained inspiration from him and I guess that we should speak about David yeah. Beckham. What is it like being married to a man who is regularly voted as one of the world's sexiest? Yeah. Do you know he's, I mean, David has a really good heart. I mean, yes, he's very, very handsome, but he's an amazing husband. He's a really incredible father as well. I mean, he's so good with the kids. He's so hands-on. Um, yeah, you know, I think that we really complement each other, for sure. And he's very supportive of what I do. And being a working mum, you know, it means that I, I do travel. I am away from home, and he's really, really supportive. Because in you know every single photo, you've always have the the children hanging off you. Yeah. You and David. I mean, you you are obviously both very family oriented. Yeah. Your children are very important to you. Yeah, you know, the kids mean everything to us. You know, and um, and our our marriage as well. For certain, you know, the kids and each other is, is at the top of our priority, for sure. And we're lucky that we can work everything around the children, everything that we do professionally, which is great. You are one of the most recognised couples in the world. You will have the paparazzi mm. follow you if they can, you know, everywhere you mm. go. Does that get tiring after a while? Do you know, I mean, I, don't, I, I can't bear it when people complain about that sort of thing. It is what it is. It kind of, it comes, it, it comes with, with the job, if you like, and we're used to it, and we have a private life. Um, so I kind of don't pay too much attention to that side of it really. Do you miss your anonymity though? 
I mean, it's been like this for such a long time. You know, we're a really private family and, you know, our kids are happy and like with all parents, that's what really matters. Are the children happy and we're happy? Um, I don't focus on anything negative at all. We consider ourselves and we are so lucky. I'm never going to sit here and say, poor me, I'm being followed by photographers. Are you kidding me? I'm the luckiest woman in the world and I, I appreciate absolutely, absolutely everything. Everything. You are fiercely protective of your of your brood, and uh, after three boys, you finally had your little girl Harper. Mm. How has that changed your life? She's great. I mean, she's she's a um, a really happy, content baby. She's she's an easy baby. The boys were definitely a little bit more tricky. You know, the boys are great with her. David's great with her. Um, yeah, all the kids are so close. It's it's great. Does it change the the dynamics of the household? having another girl? Oh, for sure, for sure. You know, because as the boys get bigger, the testosterone gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So it definitely balances things out. And we have a female dog as well. <laughs> we have a bulldog that's a female, so we're a little bit more balanced yeah. now. Evening out the numbers. Yeah. Uh, she travelled out here yeah, with Yeah, she goes you? everywhere with me. I mean, the boys, I'd love to bring the boys. I want to come back to Hong Kong with the boys, actually, because I really want them to to see it, um, but the kids, can't, the boys can't travel as much with me because they're at school and obviously their education is very, very important and myself and David are very strict when it comes to that sort of thing. Coming up, Victoria talks about the possibility of expanding her family. Oh, I would think that David would want the football team. Yeah, well, you know, we're, we'll see. Never say never. to drive with this license here in California in the United States. No, I'm just practicing. Pardon me? I'm just practicing, so I'm going to be taking my test. Practicing? Does the passenger have a license? Uh, yes, he does. Well, my advice to you is go down to yeah. and get that in care of, all right? Thank you. I still don't know what I did wrong. <sighs> I didn't know whether to pose or get arrested. You've made several documentaries. The Real Beckhams, which was documenting your move from London to Madrid, and then Victoria Beckham coming to America. Tell me, why do you invite the public into your life? I don't invite the public into my life at all. I mean, those, those documentaries are quite old. Mm. To be honest, I mean, goodness me, uh, you know, coming to America, I think I did that before I came to America. So that's about six years ago. And then the documentary before then that you referenced, we were living in Manchester. So I think we just had Brooklyn, who's 13. So, so, there, so that was a long, long time ago. Um, and I think that people got a little bit of an insight into our lives, but, but not, not too much. I mean, it was right at the time. I don't regret anything. I think it was good at the time it wouldn't be right now it wouldn't be relevant now you know what I'm doing is very different working in the fashion industry I'm excited to be here in Asia um, you know reaching out to my Asian market you know I love being here I think that the Asian women are at the forefront of fashion they really understand it um, so that's that's what I focus on now this is a big and growing market for you yes. isn't it? It is, and a really important one as well. You know, what I do really um, is not just focused on the US or England. I mean, there are lots of territories that are really big for me. And Asia is very exciting. I mean, I'm just scratching the surface at the moment, you know, working very closely with Joyce and Lane Crawford, my retail partners here that have supported me right from the start. Um, but there's lots I want to do. You know, people say, am I going to have my own store? I would love to. That's what I'm working on at the moment. That would probably be in London. But in the not too distant future, you know, maybe it will be Hong Kong. Who knows? Um, also working on e-commerce at the moment as well. I just want to take um, baby steps, build this business at a, at a steady pace. I don't want to rush. I don't want to run before I can walk. Um, just build it in the right way. Well, I mean, personally, and I think, I think you know, the, the women who I've spoken to, my friends, are like, how does she look the way that she looks? I mean, health and fitness is obviously a big part of your, your life. And image is very important as well as, you know, to what you do. How do you do it? You know, I just, I think it's important to be healthy. I try and eat healthily. I work out when I can. You know, I'd like to work out more, but, you know, when you've got a lot of children, that's quite difficult. Um, and I'm really, I'm, I'm happy. I think it's important to, to laugh a lot, to enjoy your life. Um, so I just try and be, be as healthy as I can. 
Everyone I've spoken to said you must ask, how did she get her body back after Harper? I just worked out. I mean, again, very, very healthily. Um, run a bit down, you know, uh, uh, in, in the gym and... I mean, I'm running around after four kids. That tends to kind of keep your metabolism going, to be honest with you. But, I bet it does. Yeah. Will there be a fifth baby? Who knows? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I, I want to enjoy the four that I've got, you know. They're such amazing kids and I do genuinely feel so blessed with the kids and with David and we're really enjoying the four that we've got. If I had a fifth, the next question would be, you know, when's the sixth? It's like, come on, you know. Well, I would think that David would, would want the football team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, we're, we're see. Never say never, but at the moment, I mean, Harper's only nine months. Mm -hmm. um, but we're just enjoying the kids and, yeah. Victoria, what's a, a normal day in the life of the Beckham household? Goodness, a normal day... Well, I'm normally up most of the night. Um, and then, you know, we take the kids to school um, and I then spend a few hours working. So obviously the time difference between London. This is if I'm not travelling. I work, David goes to work, and then we pick up the kids and, and we hang out as a family. A lot of people want to know, how do you juggle it all? Your wife, your mother, fashion designer, celebrity, model, and the recent spread in Harper's Bazaar is truly beautiful. Uh, you do a bit of TV mm. hosting. You're a best-selling author. Crikey, you make me sound quite good. Um, you <laughs> You're know, a busy girl. I'm I'm busy, but you know, there's lots of there's lots of working mums out there. I don't think it's any different for me than than to anybody else who is, you know, looking after children and a husband and and working at the same time. I think it's about being focused, and everything I do um, revolves around David and the kids. I have a great team of people around me, a small team, but a great team. Um, and I've got a supportive hus husband. Now, there was an opportunity for you to move to Paris mm. as a family. David was offered uh, a, a deal with uh, St. Germain Club. I guess it would have suited both you and David, but you decided to stay in Los Angeles, mm. which is where you've been for the past five years. Mm. What's, what was the reason behind that? You know, I just, I, I think it's the best place for the children. You know, the kids have their friends, they go to great schools, they're doing really well at school. Um, and like I said, everything revolved around the kids. Yes, it would have been great for my career. Um, I think that, you know, it, it would have been good for David as well, though David obviously loves playing football in America and he's very passionate about working with the Galaxy. So I think it could have been tempting for us, but our home is America and our children are happy. What do you love about living in the United States? I mean, it's a great place, you know, it really is. I love the attitude. I think it's a very positive place to live. The people are lovely. I mean, LA is great for us. The weather's great. Um, and like I said, the schools for the kids are really great and they have their friends. They're really sociable boys. Do you see yourself moving back to the UK? Um, I mean, I'd never say never, but at the moment, LA is home and we're happy. Thank you so Thank much. You. An absolute pleasure Thank to meet you. you. Congratulations. Thank too. you very much. Talk Asia, in association with BKPM. Invest in remarkable...